Hey everyone, I'm Todd Stevens. And I'm Ross Miriam. You're watching the Verse Series here on StarCityGames.com. Okay, today we got some nice popper action for you leading up into SEG Con. How are you feeling about popper? Right I now? love popper. Mm -hmm. I like just playing with, It's. It, I guess it, it's supposed to be underpowered cards, but they're actually really powerful cards. Right. Like you get to play with a ton of the blue cantrips. You get to play with uh, like various rituals, good removal spells like Lightning Bolt uh, are legal. The best card ever, the Rayman Inspector, is a legal <laughs> card in the format. Yep. Uh, but the format is very robust. Part of that is likely due to the fact that we haven't had a lot of high-level tournaments for Popper, so uh, there's not a lot of eyes on the format. But right now, there's aggro decks available, there's control decks available, there's tempo decks, there's a few combo decks uh, sitting around, and they're all viable. They all win a, a good amount on Moto, so the, the format seems pretty diverse and seems... Uh, pretty skill intensive. Like anytime you have a ton of cantrips and a ton of card selection, there's going to be a lot of decisions uh, in terms of in game play. So I like the format. I'm excited to see the results. I hope it's not just 17 uh, a Delver decks in the top 16. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe less than that, hopefully. <laughs> just 17 in the top 16. Yeah, as long as there's less than 17, then I'll be happy. Yeah, we got the Popper Classic here this weekend. Um, I, I do kind of think the, the the Delver decks look to be kind of like the best thing because they get when I mean, you get Gush and then you have you know Preordain and Ponder do they even and play Counter Brainstorm Spell. Also? So they usually play a few Brainstorms. It was, yeah, with it, all the other it stuff. It wasn't that popular, but since the printing of Ash Barons as yeah. a as a popular mana fixer, the decks just have more shuffle effects than these two. So Brainstorms become uh, more in vogue. You get Days, you get Counter Spell, like a bunch yeah. of other good Counter Spells, and you get actual Delver of Secrets and actually Ninja the T-Powers, which is one of my favorite yeah, cards. Yeah, that's a great card, too. So uh, th those decks are definitely the default. They're the front runners, but what you can they're definitely exploitable. Um, right. The older versions that used to play a lot of cheap flyers were pretty ex uh, exploitable with Scattershot Archer. There's a lot of like kooky cards that get them. So uh, decks are definitely going to come prepared, mm -hmm. and um, hopefully we, uh, we see some Ooh. innovation. There's the uh, mono black deck with like the Kumbaj witches or something yep. or whatever. It's deal. Yep, that was like a way to exploit it too. The card I think costs three mana, but actually costs two mana. Yeah, it actually costs two. Yeah, <laughs> I still can't get over it. Every time I draw it, I'm like three mana. Okay. Um, my deck that I got over here is definitely the kind of deck that I like to play, um, and I think it could be well so, positioned against the Delver decks. Grindy value deck. Got yep. it. Yep. Grindy value deck. I am not playing a grindy value deck, so okay. Unsurprising. Okay. All right. Well, let's see who goes first. We're going to be doing our Yahtzee dice yet again. Okay. Washa. I got some sixes and some threes. I got some you sixes. You got some sixes? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to take threes to be a little bit different. Come on, sixes. Two more threes. Oh, no. Nothing. Ah. Sixes. Nope. Uh, All right. No you more. got me. Got crushed in Yahtzee today. Yep. Get it wrecked. Okay, we are here for game one. I am on the play. I have both my colors. I have a one drop. And if Todd is indeed playing a grindy value deck, this is going to be one of my better threats. So definitely keeping this hand. So ours, ours looks pretty weird over here. Um, uh, thankfully, we have this card in our in our uh, hand to be able to help us with our, our fixing. I'm not really sold that this should be in the deck. I just don't know if this is, this is really worth it. But uh, you do get to pick up cards and everything. So... Maybe, but all right, let's try it out. Okay. I will start with Vintage Staple, Virulent Sliver. Okay. Vintage Staple is a stretch. But when, during the brief period when Flash was legal and vintage or unrestricted, um, the, the one of the win conditions that people used to play was Heart Sliver and four of these. Mm. You just find all of them and give them 20 poison counters. And sometimes against like shop decks that just made casting spells hard, you would just hard cast some Virulent Slivers and kill them because they had no removal. Mushu. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take it. You go to 19, and uh, where's my where's my Tom Ross? Where did I, oh, there he is. One poison counter. And I'm going to play, ooh. I really wanted to play this, because I, I want Todd to kill those um, first. But I really, I'm like, it's way more likely I get to double spell if I cast one of these. 
This is unlikely I'm going to get to double spell anyway. I'm just going to play Spinner and Sliver. I think Todd has a removal spell. All Gives... Slivers have this creature can block, block. it, though, it has flying. Okay. You may know that better as a reach. Huh? I do know that better as a reach. Okay, we will gain two life. 21. And get a pro prophetic prism down. Sure. All right, go ahead. Okay. Oh, yeah. We are doing it. Okay, I will play a plated sliver okay. and a sinew sliver. Okay. And I will attack you for five and need two poison. So you go to 16 and up to three poison counters. Yep. Pass the turn. Luckily, drew the planes there so I could double spell anyway. Everything is coming up, Millhouse. Now, unless Todd has another artifact, Galvanic Blast doesn't kill anything. God, I drew another artifact. So lucky. Okay, well, now Galvanic. They're all. They're all. They're all th uh, three toughness. Yeah, they're all three toughness? Okay. Yes. So Lightning Bolt does still do the... Now, that well, they both do the job. Yeah. Thraben Inspector does not do a whole lot. If your turn is Thraben Inspector, sack a clue, I'll be very happy. Go ahead. So now, even if Todd has a removal spell for Sinew Sliver, then my other slivers still attack easily through the Inspector. Um, yeah, let's see. Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to attack with all of them. All right, I'm going to... Uh, uh, I guess if you have two red removal spells, that's bad for me, so maybe I should play around that. If you have two red removal spells, then I just shouldn't attack with the Virulent. You get to eat that. Maybe that's what I need to play around. I really wanted to play this this turn um, to use my mana more efficiently, but two red removal spells is probably too much. And it's like... There's just so much to do with the mana in that deck that it feels weird that Todd would use his mana awkwardly. I think if he had w only one red removal spell, he would have played a two-drop instead of the Thraven Inspector, especially because Inspector doesn't block well if he only has one. Um, so, yeah. I will play um, a Predatory Sliver. Okay. Okay, so you must have Gal Blast, because now all things are four, four toughness. Uh oh. They're four toughness now? Oh, yeah. never mind. All right, well, then I'll, I'll respond then. I'll sure, you have Lightning Bolt. Uh, yeah, Bolt the Sinew. Okay. Yeah. And then I'll attack with all of them. All right, I'll block. So the, I'll block the... It doesn't really matter. They're all three, yeah. I'll just uh, block. Well, this one does the most damaging, if that's what... I'm going to bolt this one. Okay, so yeah, that makes sense. So now that's going to live, but you're going to take three. Yep, go to 13, three to 13 and two more poisons. You're up to five. Yep. Pass the turn. Okay, two cards left. We gotta fight through. Hmm, how do we wanna do this? So we got four mana. I don't really wanna play this card right now. I think, I think I may just go ahead and do this. I guess we can get rid of, get rid of a land. Okay, so if we do this, this, and so could do like all three of these this turn. Um, I think I like that. So yeah, this is gonna be the land we're gonna play. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go white, colorless, uh, Poor Sky Fisher. I'm gonna just pick up. I guess I'm gonna pick up this. Okay. Mm. This doesn't seem like it's worth picking up at all. Probably want to just pick up the prism. Yeah, I was kind of wanting to use that prism though. You could just use it and leave the ancient den. Make white. Bounce this. Oh right, right. Still right. Have okay. Red white. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you smart. Okay. Yeah. That that'll work. I could have also just used it uh, later. Or, like, I could have just used it right now also, but... All right. Uh, wasn't, wasn't the best. Okay, I'm going to re rebirth this furnace. Sure. And make three Cedric Phillips. And I will pass the turn. 
Todd playing very defensively here, not attacking with Raven Inspector. Makes sense, given... Ooh, that was a good draw. Makes sense, given the matchup here. So you have four cards in hand, and three. I know, three, and I know one of them is Prism. Yep. So I don't think there's any interaction here, at least with my creatures, that you can have with just white mana. So I'm going to play Sinew Sliver, and I'm going to play Sidewinder Sliver, so that Cedric Phillipses are not good blockers. For those of you that don't know flanking, it's whenever a creature blocks, if uh, a non-flanker blocks a flanker, the non-flanking blocker will get minus one, minus one. So even if he puts all three goblins on one creature, they'll all just die. So now I have a, a three, four, and two, two, threes that all have flanking. And yeah, you only have potentially one power with the Skyfisher blocking. So I can easily send with all of them. All right, I'm gonna cycle this to have some more information before sure. I block. Kinda of scared me a little bit there when you started tapping your mana. Is there something I missed? Dismember not legal. Yeah, this has just been an incredibly frustrating game from my side. It's just been just slipping away. Yeah, the sidewinder sliver was a great draw there to make your blocks bad because even if I just have the if I just have the sinew sliver, like the goblins just yeah. team up. I was really hoping you just attack the last turn too, playing the predatory <laughs> sliver. Yeah, hurt you figured that out. Um. Yeah, if I just have the sinews delivery, you put like Inspector plus two goblins here, and then this plus goblin here, and you just trade your three goblins for these two. I guess I just take two poison, go down to seven. Go up to seven poison yeah, and nine good. life. So. Yeah, all right, I'll just take Just this. jump one, so you're at nine life, you go to seven poison. Yeah. Pass the turn. Todd on taps with two removal spells here. He's in really good shape. I feel like I really shouldn't have just sacked that land and stuff because now I can't double spell anymore. I, that's just been a really frustrating game. All right, I'm going to have to journey to nowhere this flanking thing. Sure. Go ahead. Okay, so now my attacks get a little... Weirder, I guess the three four spinneret sliver still attacks pretty well. Um, I don't really want to. I don't want to put either of these in combat. I want to force Todd to have more removal to deal with them. This is a two three. Um, the, if Todd has one of his red removal spells for the sinew sliver, I'm I'm just in rough shape. Um, you have three cards in hand. Yeah. I know one of them is yep. the prism still. Um, I guess the safest attack I have is just with Spinneret. But if I attack with both and Todd just doesn't have a removal spell, then we have three, four, and two, three. I kind of think you you just go like double block here, and then maybe you just take three and go to eight, po like you don't, once this is off, you don't really yeah, care about going to poison. eight poison, you'd be at six life, but uh, you would have these three then against these three, and that's not that bad for you. Whereas if I just attack with spinner at sliver, then your best block is maybe Skyfisher plus the two goblins, and you just trade two goblins for spinneret, as opposed to trading one goblin for virulent. That's probably better for me. Yeah, I'll just attack with Spinneret. Okay. Um, so it's a 3-4. Yeah, so it's a 3-4. So I'm definitely putting four power in front of it. Um, I could go. I could just put them all. Uh, the difference of putting them all is you do get, to, if you don't have anything, you do get to put, and you do get to kill Inspector and a, a Goblin instead of two Goblins, which killing Inspector is pretty nice with my, my deck, how I can pick up stuff. Um, yeah, it's just a 1-2. But, like, I don't think that I'm really playing around any pump spell. I don't think, like, I think pump spells would be plus two, so I don't think the extra one yeah. really plays around a pump spell. Agreed. So I don't think it's it's worth it, so I'm going to go ahead and just block with the, the okay. three. Put the, uh, uh, wait, this is a three, four, so I can actually just kill the Skyfisher. Yeah, so you can't yeah. kill the Skyfisher. Let's just trade for the Skyfisher. Okay. Um, and then I'll play this land and play Hive Stirrings and get two colorless 1-1 one, one slivers. Which are okay. actually two two threes. Yeah. And pass the turn. So now we have the two three off the board. That's a lot better. 
and I've got a bunch of two threes against Todd's one ones. All right, I'll go ahead and play this and draw a card. Yep. But these next couple turns, if Todd can find removal versus I, if I can find more lords, are going to be key. That life brings you to ten. Yep. Go ahead. Still holding up the red, but didn't have it last turn. Ooh. You're at seven. Yep. Virulent sliver. <laughs> so now all my creatures have. You just, you just don't have removal. No. I, I was going to attack with everything. Yeah. Um, okay, here for sideboarding. Um, so the cards I'm cutting are, are in the front here. I'm going to be taking out a couple of like these fog effects that could be nice for a turn or two, but doesn't really uh, help like the main problem of Ross having like too many creatures or anything. So we trim in those. We definitely don't need a pump spell here. And um, this four mana card that's just really bad against flanking, just not really into. So instead, we're just going to bring some more removal and another solid blocker. Um, that's what we're going to be doing here. Okay. Uh, on my side, I am bringing in a couple of reactive cards that are potentially awesome if they get one of the eight targets in Todd's deck that are really good for them. Uh, so I'm really going to prioritize uh, hopefully hitting those early um, and gaining a lot of tempo in that way. And I'm cutting the two worst, I think the two worst creatures in my deck in this matchup, obviously like this is the worst creature in my deck, it's just there as an extra one drop. And this is a matchup where Todd has enough removal to not really get run over early. So uh, being such a weak draw later in the game means it's the easiest cut. This card, given how Todd played game one, he was very defensive. Uh, and this is a, a sliver that give, grants a somewhat defensive ability. So uh, I don't think that's going to come up given uh, Todd's tactics here and given the matchup. And this is an awkward card to cut, but I really just didn't want to cut a third creature. I, I want to keep my creature count high, especially for um, one of my major piece of card advantage. And uh, Todd's creatures just aren't great, and removing them is not something I want to do. What I really want to do is create a board big enough that his creatures can't block effectively anyway. So I think I can pretty easily trim one removal spell there. All right, we're back for game two here. Um, we got a little bit of an awkward hand again. We're going to be relying on Prophetic Prism yet again to help fix our mana. Um, so it's kind of unfortunate we don't get to do really anything till turn three there. But I can't really think that this would be a mulligan. I really like this card uh, in particular. It's one of uh, the cards I think is really strong overall. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this hand. Uh, I am also going to keep, I have a hand that's a little bit slow on the draw, but Popper comes with, if you're playing multiple colors, ETB tap lands, and uh, this hand is just such a good mix of stuff and not too many lands in a very attrition-oriented matchup that I think it's a keep still. Cool. All right, go ahead. Interesting. Uh, I will... Maybe if I'm just going to... I kind of think I'm, I'm just going to do this on turn two anyway. So yeah, let's just start off with a plated sliver. And this is just an, a more efficient way of doing that. Because so I want to get the toughness things out first and potentially force red removal towards them. All right, John. Yep. Good. Well, now I can... <laughs> now I can just curve out, I guess. Uh, yeah, let's just curve out. Uh, spinner at Sliver and attack. Number one. Do I want to do spinner at sliver or do I want to force some removal? Yeah, I don't want to do spinner at first. 19. You can go. If, if I just lay my lords out one by one, Todd just picks them off one by one. So I want to try to set up some double spell turns with them. If I can. Hmm. Even if it means being a little bit less aggressive. Because the odds of me just being blindly aggressive and bowling Todd over, especially on the draw, are very unlikely. I'm going to play a wellspring. Yep. Oh. All right, so we have red mana now, but... We already have red mana. Yeah, we already had it before. That's... You have so many artifacts. I'm going to go ahead and rebirth this. That's pretty good. And draw a card. Get my Cedric's back. Ooh, I still have him over here. Yep. All right, and draw. Sure. Go ahead. Okay, well, now because of my desire to attack through these Cedrics, I'm going to go to 21 and just play a Predatory Sliver and attack you with a 3-4. All right, so I'm down to 16. Yes, pass the turn. I could have attacked with Plated Sliver too, but I'm pretty sure Todd would gladly just triple block and trade two goblins for my Plated Sliver. Now I have a, uh, I guess it's still just a 2-3 Predatory Sliver, so Red Removal still does get it. Mm-hmm. 
which that's what we're going to go ahead and do. I'm going to go ahead and bolt this. Yep. Um, want to get that down before another, before something pumps it up to four toughness. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and play this glint hawk. That's true. That's not so bad. We can bounce this prism and simply replay, replay the prism and draw a card. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Um, hmm. I was going to play these so that both of my creatures could attack, uh, but now I think getting this down is better, even better for attacking. And does that mean, I mean, I want to get the other one down. I could just play this with it. Uh, and continue not deploying lords as quickly, but I mean, I'm not going to be able to deploy them super quickly anyway, but I do want to get this down after this so it's protected from Lightning Bolt. So I guess if I'm playing Sidewinder's Lover this turn, I just want to attack normally because Todd, because of Sidewinder's Lover, these essentially don't block at all, and this is like a 1-1. One, one. So this is just three, three. Yeah, this is just three. So 13. Yeah, easy attack. Now my creatures have double reach. Okay. Pass the turn. Doesn't matter how how high he flies. <laughs> they just, you can reach it. Yeah, they just stand on top of each other, and 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 you go like this, and and then you fall down. That's <laughs> that's a visual for you. Okay, that's double reach. Yeah, that's double reach. Okay, I was always you're, wondering how double reach worked. You're gaining a life going to fourteen there. Yep, going to fourteen. Okay. Um. Uh, one of these is tapped. <laughs> the spinneret slivers do also just block this glint hawk because they are T threes. So. Todd wants to attack. I'll have to kill the untapped one, which is not something he wants to do when I have another copy. I just have such an awkward hand here. You have five cards in hand and four mana. Yeah. How will I, you should be able to play a spell or two. Such an awkward hand. Todd probably wants to kill the Sidewinder's Lover to unlock his Cedrics. Mm-hmm. So I think we're going to just need, uh, all right, so you can attack with four creatures next turn. I think I may just have to like throw away a bunch of Cedrics and chump blocking, because I think we just kind of need to play uh, Palace Sentinels here and become the Monarch and start getting some more cards. So okay. I'm do that, and I'll become the Monarch and yep. go to end step and draw. So on the monarch, so now you essentially have two toughness blocking, but I, all my things are going to be bigger than that, so that's good. Um, so I'm going to play plated sliver number two, and then muscle sliver, and now I can attack with all four. And Todd is going to have to chump block with all his goblins and glint hawk in order to keep well, the monarch. What is, what is this? This oh, I guess. I guess this is, these can, are just... I can, I can bounce off this, right? Yeah, you can just bounce off with Palace Sentinels. Okay. I've, I've missed that. Yeah, because these are only two power, but there are two, uh, two fours. Yes, they're two fours. So, yeah. I can, I can so just, that'll become a one three with flanking and... Yeah, like these will just and bounce. Those bounce. So you just lose all your goblins. Yeah, and I'll just lose my three goblins. Okay. Well, pass the turn. How much removal you got next turn? Because I got six attackers now. Well, not hardly any. Um, all right, so we only have three red mana. Only three red mana, just not enough? Are you trying to, what's a quadruple red card? I don't even know. Blistering Firecat, there we go. Figured it out. No, that's one in triple red. Ah. Hmm. I, I don't know. Is there a card with four, four instances of red mana and its mana cost? That doesn't cost like a million. Not that I know of. Okay. Am I successfully distracting you from your difficult turn? No, I'm just I'm just very dead. How are you very dead? You have so many cards. You just not draw any removal spells? I mean, that's how I drew it up, but <laughs> I didn't think it would actually happen. Yeah, I'm just dead. Hmm. I'm trying to think of like what I can draw from like the end step monarch that would affect my turn here. Lightning bolt? 
Right. It's probably the only one. Most of your decks are three speed, Gal or, or Galvalesticus. Yeah. Are we going to take a line that depends on drawing a... I'm going to be Galvanic Blessing the, the Muscle Sliver. Yep. And so now everything is three toughness? Yes. Except for those are four toughness? These are four, yeah. It's just too much toughness. Um... Okay. I... I don't think you can do anything. I mean, you can, you can definitely do some things. You can make four mana and pass a turn. Maybe attack first. All right, I'm, I'm going to just go to end step. Okay. So, I'm thinking about playing that, but I think I may need to do uh, both, you draw both of these for maximum Both value. of those. Um, oh, wait, wait. I want to play Lancer. Sure. I, that, that, that was like part of like my thing about my red mana that I was thinking about. That's fine. Um, so now this gets somewhat awkward if you have removal spells. So I guess I just want to play this Oblivion Ring. Okay. I'll get rid of the Palace sent Sentinels. Yep. Now I want to attack. What's my life total right now? Uh, 14? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, that's what I'd written down, just to make sure. So if you have removal for Sidewinder Sliver, then. Um, huh. So I attack like this. And you have two removal spells. You can like block Sidewinder Sliver and kill the other two. Um, and I don't become the monarch, but I don't think you have two more red removal spells. And um, maybe I just do this first. Still, maybe some poison is relevant. Yeah, I'll just play Virulent Sliver first. It's just a, so this is like a, a trick of like how many blockers do I want to leave back in case Todd just takes it and then removes my blockers and gets the monarch back by attacking versus how many do I need to attack with to play through removal. And basically I just can't beat two instant speed removal spells if I attack like this, but I can't beat two, just two overall removal spells if I send one more creature. And if you just have the two instant speed removal spells, you're forced to chump block with this, which is like me getting an extra card anyway. So I think I just attack with these three. And Sidewinder Sliver is the card that he wants to remove with a removal spell, I think, more than the others. Um, so I'm attacking with that over the Plateds. So you're coming in for five total? Yep. All right, so I'll go to nine. I get the Monarch. Yep. Go to my end step. Yep. Pass the turn. Uh, oh, you take three? Three, three yeah. poison. Forgot about that. Thanks, Director. Got that Tom Ross counter up there. Okay, there we go. That was a good draw. Was it, do you have some sort of sweeper? Basically. All right, so I need you to attack with this. these things last turn. So let me <laughs> let me kill this, get rid of this. Okay. Um, do one damage to all your creatures. Do one damage to all your creatures. So that should just kill everything, right? Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, so I want you. I really need you to attack with one of these toughness things because that's what I held up both of those. So I could like block and deal one and then do that. So that actually that was just that was a perfect draw. There we go. Found the. You just draw journey. the extra electricery. No, I had the. the I was okay. holding both electricries last turn. Uh, so I'll attack for two. Get my monarch back. My nineteen. Nineteen. That didn't go so well. And then end step draw a card. Oh, well, that's the card that can get me back into it. Yep. Really want a, a one-drop creature, and unfortunately did not find one. Got one of each of the pump slivers. Lords, yeah, one of each lord. Pass the turn. But okay, now, we got new hope over here. New hope, you're crushing me. Yeah. <laughs> can you become the monarch twice? No. I play another thing that says you become the monarch. Okay, I didn't know how it worked. I was asking. If what happens like 
okay, what happens if you had this and I play the thing that I become the monarch? Then oh, you just get this. There. We're not just both the monarch. No. Okay. Only one person could be the monarch. That's how monarchy works, Todd. I guess that is how monarchy works. Maybe you haven't read a history sense. book in a while. <laughs> I know you're a math teacher. Seventeen. <laughs> Seventeen. All right. Um, let's you know, play. They, they try to incorporate those kinds of things <laughs> into the flavor of the game. <laughs> makes sense. See, it all it all makes sense. Uh, three of inspector get a clue. I'll just go ahead and crack said clue. Yep. Um, and I will gain two life and play another wellspring. So you're at eleven. Yep. And draw off wellspring. Yep. Go to end step. Draw from monarch. Go ahead. Okay. I will gain a life. Go to eighteen. And play some play pumpy slivers. Yep. Pass a turn. I imagine Todd just now just keeps killing my stuff and mushing me for two to five damage. Well, I do not have a removal spell in hand. So. Removal spell? Nope. That's I'm pretty not really good. killing anything. If I can get another plated or a pump sliver, I'm insulated from red removal. So that's pretty cool. Rebirth one of these. That's pretty good. Get my Cedrics back. I miss him. <laughs> And draw a card. Yep. I think that was that was a pretty good turn or a pretty good game action to do. Right. <laughs> so let's let's go ahead and do that again. Move move game objects through zones. Double the Cedrics, double the fun. Yep, double the Cedrics, double the fun. Draw your card. Draw my card. Doing everything in out of order sequencing. Thank you. Um God, how do you still have so many cards in hand? You've got so many spells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything just replaces itself. This deck's cool. All right, let's get a. Oh, actually, I'm gonna get uh, play this bounce. Forgotten cave cycler. Where's yeah? This, this is the cycler. There we go. Bounce cycler. Um, and then red cycle. Hmm. Just going off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bet you wish you didn't board out that rally of the peasants. Add red. With that white, let's have a red floating. Yep. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing with that red floating, but probably just recasting Fred Prism. Use these two. I'll keep the red floating to recast this. That seems weird. Wouldn't yeah. you just want to leave a land on tap that can be used for red mana? No, I did it that way. All right. Um, go to combat. Yeah, just lose the mana. Perfect. And just go to step. Sure. There we go. go Probably could have attacked for two there, Todd. Just, just saying. Well, you get the flanking sliver. I don't know. It's annoying. I'm playing a muscle sliver, so now I got some four fours. See, you know how I play. I never like. Why would you try to win when you can just continue not losing? Um. All right, and I have seven in hand, so I don't have to go to discard. Sure. Okay, good. Uh. Yeah, I don't really think I can do anything here yet, so My turn. maybe I'm supposed to do something. If I attack the two four fours, what do you do? You I'll block. Yeah, you probably you can go like this plus a token, and then five tokens. Yeah, like five tokens or whatever. Now I'm gonna have to rearrange my tokens. Um, and then I don't really get to do anything good. Ugh. Oops. Um, and I think I'd rather wait till one more turn, but you just have so many cards in your hand. Huh, a, I have just, just a bunch of lands and pr prisms in my hand. I'll just send. Okay. Um, I don't really mind losing both Glint Hawks. Just don't really mind. I just want to make sure I kill these. There we go. Block. Uh, so this has six coming at it, and this has five coming at it. So I'm going to put uh, two goblins into Glint Hawk, and I'm going to mutagenic growth this Cindy Sliver so it lives. Lives for a little bit. Yeah. So you, or no, it's not going to live because it's going to die anyway. Yep. It's going to uh, live for a little bit. That's why this wasn't a good play. 
because I was going to lose one regardless. I guess I should have done this first. Well, I screwed this up, but I was probably losing this game. Yeah, anyway. you probably didn't think I was going to block with both, both Clint Hawks. If I didn't. No, I, I should expect you to just block all the time. You have so many cards in hand, you just want to trade. Like yeah. my attack suggests something. So this was just bad on my part. Um, okay, whatever. I'll just kill these and kill these. Okay. Now I have a 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> you can go. Two yeah. one ones and a one two. You have a two two. That's pretty pretty close game. Yep. Should have just done this first. Then I could have set this up, and I would have just forced Todd to have a bunch of removal on this turn, which he didn't have last turn. All right, Prism. Maybe could have gotten something going at that point, but now I'm really dead. Todd just Prism. has infinite turns to sit here and draw thirty seven cards. Maybe he'll deck himself. It's possible. Uh, I mean, I know how much you hate attacking. You might just never do it. <laughs> Of course, Guy Fisher to bounce. Prism. Um, you probably just have enough burn left to kill me. <laughs> I will. Yeah, you got three of each. That's that's twenty one right there. Gain a life. You're twelve. Twelve. Yeah, you could sit here and just draw your tire deck and burn me out. Play another three of an inspector. Sure. Get yourself another clue. Red bolt. Oh, right. You have the Mewjank. Right? <laughs> I wouldn't know that you had the Mewjank. Sure, though. sure. You've got a clue over there. Yep. From the inspector. And, yeah, because I wouldn't know that you had that. All right. So the, now the it has now it's one. A, now it's a 4 4 3 damage on it. Yeah, so 4 4 3 damage on it. So we'll go ahead and send in for 3. 15. All right. Go ahead. End step. Yep. Draw. Okay, I will journey to nowhere the core skyfisher and then attack you for two. You probably want a chump block. Nah, I'll take it. No, okay, give me the monarch. Oh, right. <laughs> and some draw card. You can go. <laughs> You're dead. This is so silly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this game two. All right. And two. Yeah. I don't think you knew this when you just selected that deck, but this is what this deck does. I like it. It's no, actually, I, that's what I'm saying. I like this deck. Yeah. It is a, this is the most Todd Stevensy deck possible. Draw. Yeah, this is definitely your popper deck. <laughs> this is just red, white, value down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pick this back up. Sure. Draw. Yep. Ooh. All right. Found a bolt. Bolt that. Yep. Combat tag you for four. I go to 11. I get the monarch back. Yep. And what else can I do? Let's play another prism. Sure, why not? <laughs> Told you my hand was just all, all uh, prisms. All right. Um, and so I don't think I played a, No, I didn't. I didn't actually play land. So, play land, gain a life, go to eleven. Yep. And then end step, draw card. And I'm dead. Hooray! Okay, we are here for game three. I'm on the play. Uh, my hand is not great, but it has my best card in the matchup and a couple early plays. So I don't think I can mulligan it. Hopefully, uh, we don't draw too many lands here off the top. Yeah, mine's, mine's definitely over. I'm just a monocolor deck over here. So that's fine. Okay. Well, I have a Sidewinder Silver. Um, I think I want to lead. Yeah, let's lead with, and that's flanking. Yeah. That card is very good. Inspector doesn't block. Yeah, it's very good against yeah. my whole three of Inspector plan here that I was going to go with. I'll just get the tap land in then. Three of Inspector's not going to block anyway. Let's get our tap okay. land in. Okay, you for one. Yep, 19. Not a bad draw here. I'm going to use my mana. Spinner at Slur. Okay. Pass. You have Reach. Hmm. I do like that card. Hmm. All right, I guess we're, I guess we're going to get the our other tap land in, so we'll just get Inspector. Bring you to 20. Get a clue. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, it's my shoe for three. 17. And uh, I'm like tempted to play these this turn, but that just runs head first into an electricery. So I think I'm just going to use my mana and uh, play this lead the stampede. Okay. Yeah. I was like three drops liver. What's well, a three drops liver? Eh, not the best. Really hoping to hit four, but I guess my, my deck isn't that dense with creatures, but three is fine. Got predatory plated sidewinder. Okay. So you have a flanking. Uh, Lord and that's a plus one. Okay, pass the turn. I'll leave him up for you. That's okay. I got, it. I got. It. Um. 
Hmm. Oh, just an awkward hand. Well, oh. you said that every time. Yeah, I just I have zero removal, which is like kind of a problem. I guess I have one one removal spell, but like okay, I still so have. Once again, lying. You you have a removal spell. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. I do have a removal spell. But just like this, it's like awkward. Like I want to play Glint Hawk, but I have like this clue. You know, I have multiple sure. Glint Hawks and and one clue. You have an ancient den. Ew. Hey, I have an ancient dead. I guess that's an artifact. Todd just doesn't even know how his cards work. You know, there's a reason these are in your deck, right? I figured they turned on Metalcraft or something. Yeah, that was another reason they're in your deck. There are reasons they are in your deck. So if you go flanking... No, so you're going to go Lord plus, plus zero plus one next turn. And then am I just dead? I kind of feel like I'm just dead to that. So I'm probably going to need my to save like my removal that. spell to, for the Lord, which means that I want to do these two this turn. Pick up Inspector, maybe? All right, so attack in. 19, getting 19. aggressive. Yeah, I mean, I can't really block anyway. Yeah. I'll, I'm going to Skyfisher bounce this and Glint Hawk bounce this. Sure. Go ahead. So now you can essentially block with two power, which means you get to like trade for a creature. That's yeah. pretty cute that you think you can do that. Um, so I am going to, as Todd said, play Predatory Sliver, but I had an extra land, so I get to play this other Sidewinder that he knows about and make blocking really bad. So do they have double flanking now? Oh yeah, flanking, flanking is cumulative. Yeah, I'm... Right? I'm dead. I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, yeah, so attack you for five. Three, four, five. Yeah. Brings you to 12. Yep. And I will pass the turn. Okay. That's one of the best draws we could have. <laughs> Definitely a very good draw. Um, so I'm going to journey to nowhere this thing. Sure. And pass turn. Okay, so if Todd has another removal spell for one of the flankers, then he gets to double block one of these and trade for it. So feels like I should probably play another flanker so that doesn't happen. So now they have triple flanking, and his blocks are all pretty bad. Attack you for five. All right, I'm going to take out the plus zero, plus one, one. Yep. So I take four. one, two, three, four. Go to eight. Into eight. Now I'm probably getting electric read as a three for one, so why don't we just lead instead of playing more into that? Okay. Oh, come on. Ugh. Actually, that would have been... Should have, should have leaded first, then I wouldn't have been set up for this electric read. So that's a tilt. Just a plated sliver. And now um, this three for one's gonna be rough. All right, come on, electricery. So we have a, the plated sliver would have done the same job as this, but it would have insulated me from electricery here. Would have forced another removal spell, but I guess Todd doesn't have it. So, do you just play this land? Yep. Okay. Well, that's good. Oh, no no oh, untapped land here is nice. No. Nope. And uh, Todd's draws. I guess we're cracking this clue. Yep. Hmm. Playing that, getting the clue back. Sure. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Attack for four. I'm at 15. Go ahead. That's a good one. Um, so that's going to force Todd to need multiple removal spells to to set up an electricery, so I'll play two plated slivers, let's play a virulent sliver two, and attack you for five. And I'll have poisonous one. All right, I'll block the big thing. It brings you to five, and you take th three poison counters. Get our friend Tom Ross over here, and then I'll pass the turn. Hope I don't get wrath somehow. Game. Good game. 
All right, we're back here for the conclusion with Codolta Boros and Green White Slivers. And I think we really uh, kind of found out how important the red removal is and just removal spells in general. I just kept uh, a hand of just white creatures, and yeah. that was just a terrible keep. I need to mulligan that 100%. Like, my yeah. hand was not even playable. In the, yeah, in, in this matchup, in this matchup. Like the, the slivers are so synergistic. If you let them get out of hand at all, your creatures just don't do anything. And we saw that even with like the flanking sliver, one of the weaker slivers, I think, in the deck, um, overall but makes combat like a nightmare for you and it, you just weren't really ever able to block and yeah. I, i'll easily outpace you obviously if we're in a race because your deck's not set up to do that but you what you really want is to have like three or four removal spells to stop me from assembling a synergistic battlefield and then a couple creatures that individually will trump whatever i have left if i have a one two plated sliver left or like one flanking sliver maybe a spinneret there your palace sentinels and core sky fishers and things will easily be able to dominate combat at that point but left to their own devices the slivers they're real good at they're real good at attacking yeah they yep. don't like being stopped from attacking <laughs> so they help each other out they band together and that's why they're great so if you're playing the uh boros deck like uh if i play the popper classic this is what i play um definitely learn that do not keep a hand without removal against slivers like that's yeah. just yeah against some of the other control decks sure the all the white card advantage generating creatures and like one artifact is going to be a good hand but against the more aggressive decks you really just want to go removal removal user creatures for card advantage removal removal then i have a stable battlefield uh yeah. on the green white sliver side this deck is pretty good and normally slivers because they're um you know, you, because you really want to get all the best of them, you normally have to play a ton of colors. And we've seen that in like modern, you can play five colors because there's all the, the sweet rare lands. In Pauper, there are enough good ones that you just get to go down to two colors, so your mana base is workable, and you have good support spells. You have white removal spells, which are good. Journey, Oblivion Ring, Leave the Stampede is perfect. Leave the, yeah, Leave the Stampede is absolutely right. perfect. And Mutagenic Growth is really good because often you just need that one turn to untap when your creatures are vulnerable, and then you play more lords, and suddenly the red removal becomes bad. Mm -hmm. I was never really able to set that up, but that's stuff, something that could definitely happen. Yeah. If, I, if you have a Lightning Bolt or a two-point Galv Blast for, to my first lord, and then I slam lord plus plate at the next turn, Things get pretty rough for you. Yeah, it can also just really help out in a key combat, you know, yep. keeping like your one lord alive in the combat that like helps like everything else. Like yep. it's it's perfect there. And then uh, like a plated sliver just goes along with the lords. That one extra point of toughness is usually really important in combat or against removal. Fl uh, the flanking sliver again, just one extra point in combat against any blockers. And uh, so the spinneret slivers are just really good against the delver decks. There's a lot of fl random flying creatures around uh, in case you want to block those. So I think that's the best support sliver. They're just all green and white. It's, yep. it's, it's actually awesome. Uh, so kudos to whoever found this one. This is just a sweet little aggro deck. I played a uh, green red aggro last weekend against uh, Todd Anderson, which is a cool deck that had Burning Tree Emissary and both red green hack blades. The Jun or blades. There's ha hack blade and hush blade. Okay. Jund. So the the Burning Tree lets you cast either of them because they're both castable off red and green, and is a multicolor permanent for them. Mm -hmm. And that was a cool little red green deck. He eviscerated me with blue red Delver. Because again, <laughs> yeah. like eight, eight cheap red removal spells. I, I did not feel comfortable once I figured out how I was playing this red white deck. But you know, game one, I'm able to like just barely get there out of your removal and and. Uh, game three as well, a, a loose keep on your part, sure, but the fact that I'm able to really punish you if you don't have removal really early is a good sign for this deck because it means that like anything less than your top 20, 25% of draws is not going to be enough, and that's where you want to be as an aggressive deck. You're not going to beat them when they just stay on curve with you. If you go turn one, bolt your thing, turn two, like maybe cantrip, turn three, two removal spells, like I'm not going to get ahead. Right. And uh, but it, it, if one stumble is all you need to completely dominate the game, I, I had a pretty aggressive draw there with a, a lot of one drops. So, uh, and it, even though I didn't really only have the one lord and you removed it, yep. those two twos and one ones damage adds up. Yep. Yeah. No, it looked it looked really impressive. All three of those games you're playing. I I played uh, the sliver deck a couple months ago. It was didn't it was much more clunky like that I had. I had like two landers that just didn't get more lands, so I could never like do the double spelling and stuff. Yeah. Um, so that that can happen there too, but uh, yeah, both these decks look looks like uh, good options for the uh, for the Popper Classic here at SCG Con this weekend. Yeah, I think Red White is just one of the top decks in the format. Yeah. It has been for a little while now. Uh, like you said, it, it's a deck that matches up pretty well against Delver. Your creatures trade if if they get through, but you have a bunch of good removal and yeah, then like good it, flyers that can like block yeah. pretty well. It's just a, a mid range deck that out grinds them in card advantage and doesn't get tempoed out that well 
because it's all cheap spells. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the artifact synergies let you play these cheap spells rather than having to gain card advantage through uh, slower, more clunky means. And that means they're not going to be able to really race you effectively and you're able to just win the long game. So definitely a, a good choice if you expect a lot of people to bring blue decks. Uh, also just good against various aggro decks. Like I think this matchup overall is good, probably right. for the red-white side, but, but I'm just so talented, and I told you this week I'm just going to win all the time. That's true. You did say that. So I'm going to have to step up my game a little bit tomorrow. We got um, uh, standard. standard. Yeah, we got standard okay. tomorrow. Just and an every, everyday standard. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, finishing up with the no ban list modern on Friday. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. But um, hopefully you all bring out some sweet brews to the uh, Popper Classic this weekend at SCG Con. I'm you know, just really looking forward to just every, all the events this weekend. This is going to be awesome. Oh, be yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm excited. I think that if I don't top eight the Invitational, the Popper mm -hmm. Classic, I might end up playing on Sunday. Yeah, that's. I kind of want to play the Popper Classic, I don't Classic know too. how I'm going to get a deck together. i got to figure that out. got to figure oh, out just, what I'm deck. I'm going to buy these cards. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm just going to get these cards. All right, well, uh, that's going to be it for Ross and I today. So come on back to see us. some more standard action tomorrow. And remember, if you're uh, not going to be at SCGCon this weekend, make sure you check out all the action there on twitch.tv slash Tour as well. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have coverage starting on Friday. We'll have it on Saturday. We'll have it on Sunday. They're going to cover the top eight of the no ban list open. They're going to mm -hmm. cover, I think, some of the Popper Classic on Sunday as well. There's a whole uh, coverage schedule. Hopefully, I didn't just go crazy and promise something we don't have. But, um, <laughs> I know I'm they're doing sure. the, the top eight of the no ban list, yeah. Modern Open. Uh, Todd Aronson's going to be doing that yeah. one. But I, I think they're also doing some some popper coverage, too, because those are the two new exciting formats, so they want people to see them. Right. So we'll, we'll bring you some standard, we'll bring you some modern, we'll bring you some no ban list, Modern. I don't know, maybe they'll do coverage of vintage. I don't know. They'll probably got yeah. co they'll coverage for days. Yeah, three All days. coverage. <laughs> three <laughs> that's, whole days. That's what days. I do know. Three days of coverage. That's going to happen. All right, well, that's going to be it. So we'll see you back tomorrow here on the Versa Series. Bye.